All right, so we're still waiting for the gun situation to resolve at 22 o'clock. But in the meantime, I have another reason to talk to Everart. And it's a reason to talk to Placens and Dicemaker. But also, we're trying to find a tape to deal with this melody for Egghead. So there's a few things going on here. I still have like six and a half hours. So we're going right there. Two more hours. Look at all these skill points I've got. Mm, so many skill points. I should do some risky things. Just throw some skills around. Won't it be fun? Good morning, comrade. Yeah, harder, cool. Hey, I have a tape with me. Maybe you can use it to improve Van Eyck's jam. Tape, yeah. He grins. Spin the tape until the space escape, yeah. I've got this banging mega mix. Give him the great door gunner mega mix. All right. He snatches the tape from your hand and attaches it to the empty reel slot. One hand on his headphones, he listens to the audio. Then, shaking his head, he says, No, no, no. This is gonna make people scared. He hands the tape back to you. Keep it positive. Keep the love in the house. Okay, never mind. Well, that was a crazy sound we heard before. Yeah, it was awesome and scary. Very hardcore. His voice booms through the chamber, then gets silent. Too hardcore, in fact. He brushes his hand through his hair. What? I couldn't control it at all. What did... He brushes his hands through his hair? But he's called Egghead. Because he doesn't have hair. Now that I look at his character model, he looks weirdly like he has hair. Like he has blonde hair. But I thought Egghead was bald. His avatar looks bald and he's called Egghead, which is a thing people call bald people. I'm confused. I'm confused. <laughs> what happened? It sucks up all the air in the mix until the only it's the only thing left. Starts compressing itself and everything else around it. Completely fills up the headspace extreme. Is there anything else we can do about it? Oh! His mind's seemingly selecting through options. I don't know. Maybe someone could do something with this. I imagine this is the sound the future could make. Sounds like the future could be even more hardcore than I ever imagined. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wir sind schlecht, wir sind Gefahr, wir machen Pornos. What do you mean, file not found? No, that's not it. Oh, did she lose all of her data when that happened? Yes, what is it? Huh? No. <clears throat> no. I figure we, a big thing just happens. I'll check in with everybody. Let's see if there's new stuff. Yo, man! What's on your mind? He drops the bolt into his toolbox. Nope. Sounds like it's smiling. What? No, not a lot of new feedback apparently. Oh, hey man, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Goodbye, officer. Okay, so I need to find a new tape. Which, if I can trigger, if I can trigger my encyclopedia check more often, that I can get more money. This is my income source now. I'm, I'm like completely beyond the concept of gathering money via garbage at this point because you only get like 10 cents each so like every time that I Yeah It's like It's like 20 right it's I think it, I think you got 10 cents each for tear But every time I trigger that thing it gives me Two dollars. So yeah, it's. I have to collect twenty bottles just to keep up with what, the, what I get from one encyclopedia check. There's some disparities in income sources in this game. Yeah, we've been around here before. All right, time to run all the way back to the main area once again. Do do do. do.
Right, it's just reminding me about my new books. <coughs> we'll get to those when I get the chance. I am happy that, as I, I said it before, but I'm happy that the the forged signature thing took the form <coughs> took the form of idiot to Doom Spiral just writing his name on it, because that means it's definitely not valid, and no one will think it is when they read it. So I am just sabotaging Everart. <clears throat> I need some water. Might as well check this place again for records. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, St. Ghislaine placed the tree, the tree with the fluttering tape coming out of it. I just remembered. I need to look up on that too. Still, there's boom boxes there. There's actually not much in this shop, is there? Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Have people from Everard Claire's Union come here to track my, that gun? Maybe. Shady looking guys came in here yesterday, looking like they'd just taken off their wild pines overalls. They asked if I had a police weapon to sell. I told them I already sold it. There, that, uh, they went their way. It was a trip. But you know, all sorts of people come here asking for all sorts of things. Wait, then it might be true, Everts claims. Maybe Claire really is tracking down your gun. The lieutenant's eyebrows raised slightly. Hmm. Type. Oh, there's no open quote. People are. <laughs> Alright, so. Oleaginous. <laughs> Rich, covered with or producing oil. Oily or greasy. <laughs> oh, rich in, covered with, or so they're oily, yeah. Or exaggeratedly and distastefully complimentary. Osaqueous. Another fucking word to Google. Osaqueous. Obedient or attentive to an excessive or servile degree. Obsequious. Obsequious. It's not even the word we're looking at right now. Ole so. Oleaginous. Oleaginous. Motherfucker. <laughs> It's, one, it's always the thing when you look up a definition for a word and then it's like, it's a synonym to another word that you also don't know. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Osequinous and oleaginous. Have I heard these words ever, I wonder? Huh. I'm not affording that light. But the fact that I'm generating so much money from my encyclopedia makes me almost wonder if I could have found that one particular memory sooner. It's the Wompty Dompty Dom Center, isn't it? Is that what gave it to me? Uh, click this. Uh, it is the Wompty Dompty Dom Center. So I could have found this place at the beginning of day three, but I found it like at the end of day four. So I could have found it a fair bit sooner, which could have led to some faster results, I suppose, but not monstrously so. Oh yeah, there's the light. That's the kind of light that uh, you can buy at the store. Yeah, those are around everywhere. I'll tell them both at all costs. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Lay, since I have something to tell you, I found the actual source of doom. What do you mean, the actual source? She clutches her pendant, clearly irritated. Are you here to lecture me about economics again? My investigation has led me to discover a two millimeter entropenetic hole in reality. That's the source of doom, both in the commercial area and in Martinez. A, a what? She wasn't expecting this, at least not the word entropenetic. I'm gonna Google Entrepreneurik, but it should be kind of. Let's see. It should be kind of straightforward because. Entry? Entropy? Entroponetic. Oops. 
Flight typo. Entropenetic. Number one result. F the fucking Wikipedia page for the pale for Disco Elysium. Yeah. I guess that would add to why she didn't expect that word. Because it's made up. <laughs> you know, it's made up via root words and so on. That would It's, it's constructed the way that makes sense. And so it's intuitive enough to guess what it means. But it's actually it doesn't seem to have any real existence outside of this word out outside of this game but it's an entropy based force which makes sense cuz that's what the pale is the pale is all the game all the complexity of reality eroding into nothingness a tiny hole in reality it may be connected with pale an origin point of sorts it would explain why, historically, so many things have ended in failure here at Martinez. Ma'am, what he's telling is true. We found an anthropogenic anomaly in the small Pinewood church down the coast. I don't mean to be an alarmist, and more research is needed, but it's not looking good. But, but that's not in any of the ancient texts! How am I supposed to protect my bookstore from that? Tell her the truth. It's out of her hands. You can't protect it. Not against Pale. Close up the shop and try to get as far away from this thing as possible. Huh. Or I can say that you can do hope. You can have hope. Hmm. I don't have to listen to rhetoric. I could tell her to hope against hope, basically. After all, it's supposed to be like it magically makes you fail at at success checks and so on and oh man, no one has good luck around here, but like I just had an episode full of really good luck and then one piece of monumentally bad luck that kind of put a squash on it at the end, but like I've had some really good luck lately. You can still have good luck in this universe. I have gameplay proof of it. It's just... It's not a good sign. In the long term, this place is fucked. But it probably grows so slowly that no one that lives here now is going to notice. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not telling the people building a fucking disco around it to run away. You can protect it with hope. By refusing to give up. That's what people have done in the past, by building a church, a place of worship around this thing. You're right, officer. I mustn't lose faith, especially now that Annette is finally settling in a school and making friends. She looks at her daughter, quietly studying in the corner of the shop. No, we can't just leave. Besides, didn't I have some sealite hope catchers around here somewhere? I am I must find them. Everything will be alright if I could just find them. That's definitely not true. Thank you for your help. In any case, you're welcome back here anytime. Farewell, book peddler. Well, I made her aware. She can do with what as she will. I'm always more in favor of the make people aware part of stuff than the tell them what to do with their lives part of stuff, because that always feels slightly weird. Where you like command people how to survive as humans. It's like, they're adults, they can make their own goddamn choices, but in a lot of RPGs, you, like, command people to make massively, uh, massive life-changing decisions, and even if it sounds like a suggestion, they totally do it half the time, and you're like, ah? Uh -huh. I mean, you know you better than me, right? I haven't visited the dice maker for a while. Uh... Also, maybe don't remember how to? <laughs> I think it's somewhere in this messy part of the building. There's like a hallway somewhere that I'm forgetting how to get to. Or here we go. There we are. Seems rude to brandish a flashlight in her face. Oh, it's you again. Are you looking for a die? I think I found the actual source of the curse. 
You mean the curse I'm spared of because I live outside its immediate reach? It's a bit more complicated than I first thought it would be. I'm listening. She leans back in her chair, arms crossed across her chest. There's a two millimeter hole in reality, located in a church on the other side of the canal. I think it may be related to Pale. Excuse me? She sits up, visibly agitated. A two millimeter hole in reality? This can't be true. I'm afraid it is, ma'am. Sunu Lukanen killed the former lead programmer of Fortress Accidents made the discovery. Suna's involved in this. She appears to take this in while the chatter from her headphones continues unabated. So it's even worse than I thought. It's not just the commercial area that's cursed, it's the entire world. He looks outside the window where daylight has filled the yard. Don't worry about it. You've been doing fine so far, I'm sure it's nothing. You mean considering the fact that the world is collapsing on my porch? She gives you a rueful smile and takes a look around. In any case, thank you for stopping by. It's good to have an answer, even if I can't claim to understand it fully. I guess there's that, yeah. So you can buy a dice from Viral. There's cursed dice. Extraordinary dice. I already got Viral untethered. A very regular dice. Like a moral intern dice. Hmm. So we've, we've had multiple times now where the dice have un have like... They've... they've where is it? Here we go. They 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 set off my white checks. The issue is figuring out which ones I would want. But like this would have been my one of my oh man. I wonder if one of them resets half light because maybe I could have done the racist lorry driver thing if I knew the right dice. Is empathy ready? Empathy has one more point I can put into it to try one more time with Kuno, and then in order to try again I would have to. Uh, I do want to do the empathy with Kuno thing. Just because it'd be really interesting. Narratively, to be able to figure out Kuno. He's, an in he's just an interesting character. Or at least an entertaining one. A well-written one, at least. Distressing bundle of fuck-uppery he is. Most of my checks are actually unchecked. But yeah, I, I definitely wish I could tell the game to... I could sort these, like, tell the game not to acknowledge some of these and put them in a separate category where I can... where I could still look at them if I needed to, but otherwise they'd be out of my way. Oh, this... Oh! Suzerenti, the board game. Oh. That check's unlocked. So is the washerwoman. But I... Uh, but I don't need to suggest her... See, 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 one of the problems here is some of these things I don't want to ever do. Like, I don't want to internalize Measurehead's phrenology, so I don't want- I don't want- I want this off the list so I can better review this list for its useful information. I also want to remove all the ones that involve begging for money, because I'm not- I'm not interested in doing that unless I genuinely really need to, which I don't. So I want those off the list, because I can't even tell which ones they are, but I'm, I know- I'm pretty sure C. Lang is- is an example of that. Uh... I think Lillian and Klaasje both have ones that are about sleeping with them. So I'm like, alright, sort those ones out. The Washerwoman is actually an out-of-date one. That's about convincing her to sign a thing, which we're already passed. I already mailed it, so that check should not exist, but it's still listed here? Like, this me this this menu is actually kind of a mess. Like, once you, get to, once you get late enough in the game, there's too many things listed on it at once. Some of which you don't care about and never will. Some of which aren't... don't exist anymore? Like, the map wall one, I think, doesn't exist anymore, and the mirror one doesn't exist anymore. Right? And the sleeping dock worker, he's gone. But this check won't go away? 
I might even go as far as to say that this screen right here is the worst part of the entire game, which is a big compliment to the game, because <laughs> there's not a lot to complain about, generally, but this screen is just kind of a nightmare. Uh, and whenever I want to sort through it to figure out what checks I'm trying to uh, unlock or gain access to again, uh, it's just kind of a it's kind of a bummer how unhelpful the screen is because there's just so many things on it they don't necessarily care about. But yeah, I guess uh, this isn't relevant anymore. That doesn't seem particularly important. That might not ever be important. So I guess the only check in the entire world uh, that I can unlock is <coughs> Kuno. Which one of these would be an empathy dice? I kind of wish that the one, the dice that I already had told me which white checks they unlocked instead of just saying, you can check your thing to see what they've unlocked. Because if they told me, I'd have more information to go on about which ones they were. Because what if the, what if, uh, what if there's one dice per stat, for example, and unlocks all the white checks for all of them? Or maybe it is like a specific list of things, or who knows what. I, I, just, I just don't know. I don't know if the dice necessarily give you a lot to go on. Oh well. Uh, all right, what color are my dice? The Sirens Twins. So that's green. And that's blue and red. Confusing. So, considering one of them is blue and one of them is red, I'm tempted to think that, like, you know, one of them incre unlocked all my physical checks and one of them unlocked all my intellect checks. When I got those twins, maybe? Because it never told you, unfortunately. It just says, oh, no, figure it out, man. But the other one's green, and I don't have a green stat. At most, it might mean yellow and blue combined. Maybe it unlocked all of those. It, which might be true, actually. All of the current checks that are, un are that are locked are red and purple. So what if the green die did unlock all of my yellow and blue? Because all of my yellow, yellow and blue are unlocked right now. But which one of them were locked in the first place? The padlocked door? Wait, what? What? Oh, it's the it's the fucking door to the church. The church is open game. Get rid of this Get rid of this shit. There's so much stuff that isn't even in the game anymore on this menu. What a bummer uh, What would have been unlocked I was gonna say suzerainty, but that's purple. I Don't know I, don't, I Maybe I, th I think my color theory might be irrelevant, but I'm grasping. I'm just trying to Figure something out. I gotta change this hat. I gotta get my style back on. There we go. Nothing else needs to change. <laughs> I'm beautiful. But that hat is a problem. I'll show you, Apocalypse Cop. <laughs> yeah, I definitely wanna. I definitely wanna play uh, Su uh, Suzerenti when I get the chance. Maybe after I get my gun, we'll close out the night by playing it. But uh, I do want to play it. But I have some stuff I need to take care of between then and now. So I don't really want to eat up that time now. Maybe I'll do that as the calm before the storm. It is I, Disco Cop. <laughs> is it even turned on? Or do I have to turn on, don't I? Equip this to play- oh, right. Oh, I don't have any tapes, do I? Oh, that's the wrong screen? I forgot what this was. It's been so long. 
I probably shouldn't have given this to that guy. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have given this to Egghead. Is that my only tape? I think it is. Nothing else looks, looks like a tape around here. Whoops. So I sure don't have any music to play in this thing. Yeah. I guess I will go back to holding this bizarre tool like I'm some kind of samurai. Don't mind me just doing this long ass trek again. Gotta interrogate Everard about drugs. Jump cut for justice. Mr. Dubois, a pleasure as always. You don't have to sit down this time, since you're already sat on that chair. That's just continuously the weirdest line to me. I met a girl named Marcel who said she's working with you. Funny. The big man lets out a lazy yawn. That doesn't ring any bells, Harry. Funny. The lieutenant says, looking up from his notebook. She was trying to set up a narcotics operation in the old church on the coast. Oh, that a cell. He taps his temple. Yes, I do seem to remember sen sending a pretty young thing down there to liven up the place. Get some anodic music in there. Did you also tell her to, ch to start the amphetamine lab? Amphetamine lab? He seems taken aback. That sounds very immoral and debauched. Frankly, a health risk. But, but what do I know about kids these days? The music they listen, the drugs they do while they listen to that music. He shakes his head with a melancholy smile. Sounds to me like you're trying to start an amphetamine lab in the district. Lieutenant says with an uncharacteristic note of contempt in his voice. And you're using some delinquents you found, God knows where, to set it up and run for it for you. Found God knows where? The big man exhales loudly. That Asel is the daughter of Maiko and Kebab. A man who once killed a guy with a kebab. Oh, Maiko the kebab, whoops. I think a daughter of a man who killed a man with a kebab can handle running a little nightclub, don't you? Maiko the kebab, really? I guess we have that to ask her about now. Maybe it was Bo Bogowir or Jacob. He, st he st stares off into the distance, seemingly trying to remember, remember something. I think it might have been Conrad. Anyway, I shut down the amphetamine production, so let them go on with the nightclub plan. A nightclub. He taps on his chin. Harry, I'm an old-fashioned guy. After work, I like to listen to some rock and roll music and have a non-alcoholic lager. That's old- that's old-fashioned? Non-alcoholic lager? Nightclubs don't interest me. But here I am, talking about myself. When you have much more important things going on. His expression became serious. Tell me, Harry, how can I help you? You can go fuck yourself! <laughs> Ooh, here we go. The Delta Logistics Company truck stands here, waiting, reflecting white light from the courtyard behind it. You knew it would be here, blocking the gate. Are the people in there? Yes. People hard at work at their desks. They can barely tell if it's day or night anymore because the lights in the building are so uniform and bright. Who knows when they'll come out? What keeps them motivated? Irony. They're yuppies masquerading as Mazovians. Or was it Mazovians masquerading as yuppies? Even they get confused sometimes. Out here in poverty-stricken Martinez. Why is the light so strange? Because this is a place of mystery. Hey Kim, let's try to get into that courtyard. It's so mysterious. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses. Whatever's going on there can hardly be of any consequence to our ongoing investigation. You can come back to it on your own when we're done with this case. Let it go for now. More importantly though, 
I see you dangling here. Yeah. I think that's the tape I'm looking for. I'm a little... That's a little concerning, though. That doesn't look very playable. Looks like it's free tape. The Hawthorne tree on Rudisinka's lane. Bronze-colored ribbons of magnetic tape are caught in its branches, fluttering in the breeze. Just like promised, you've stood here for what seems like eons, guzzling the sickly fumes of lorries and carriages. The multi-tool is extra multi? <laughs> Karaoke superstar? That actually gives me a bonus to this? I mean, I have very high interfacing, so I'm probably good regardless, but... <laughs> Huh. Hasn't it been in the rain and snow for days or weeks or who knows how long? I'd be a little worried. Disentangle the tape. I'm like, please don't fuck me with, with snake eyes again. With slow and deliberate motions, pulling, bending, and unraveling, you manage to extricate the magnetic tape from the branches. It curls up in a mess inside your pocket. If only you could find a way to respool it so that you can hear what's on the tape. Maybe Roy from the pawn shop can help you with this. The lieutenant looks at the mess in your hands. Only after you've successfully cleaned up the branches does the curiosity get him. What's the take f what is the tape full? He asks. It's for Egghead. I promised to make his Van Aix jam hit a bit harder. Maybe this take tape can help. Ow. Oh, it's broken and unspooled. Do you think your new buddy knows how to fix it? He has to, he's the master of ceremonies after all. Alright. Looks like the lieutenant doesn't really know what that means. You could also get that fixed at the pawn shop across the street. We shouldn't waste our time. He looks at his wrist wristwatch a little impatiently. You know, since tape spinning isn't really our day job, solving mis murder investigations is. Good idea. We might have the tools. The tape projector in the pawn shop uses similar tape. Good, Hawthorne. Pat the tree. Patting the tree reveals a small sticker, which is, has almost been worn to oblivion. It reads, RCM Emergency Desk Number Eight one hundred two. Underneath a slogan, "Mankind, be vigilant." The gnarled hawthorn tr tree on Rue de Saint Gislaine endures the wintry gusts with ease. Huh? An old RCM sticker. There we go. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Hey, do you know how to fix this? Show him the bundle of magnetic tape. He looks at the bronze-colored bundle in your hand. You mean respool it? Yeah, I do, but... Great, could you do it, please? This is important. I need to be able to play this tape for someone. He slowly finishes his thought. But I'm not... I'm not some Mr. Fixit, I'm a pawnbroker. If you want to pawn the tape, sure, though it looks pretty worthless. Wait, but you tinker with film tapes all the time, isn't this the same? No, it's different. Those film tapes actually mean something to me, but this is just a bu worthless bundle of old tape. Worthless? It's not, it's not worthless, Roy. This could be the next big thing for the local dance music scene. Huh? He slowly taps his finger on the counter. What do you mean? Do you know that old church down the coast? Yes. What about it? I helped some young ravers turn this place into a nightclub. And the pl and the play- Oh, and they play these weird beats here. There. Which they call anodic music. Is it any good? The music, I mean. Is 
No, that's the thing. You can't believe how unbelievably thin the beat is. There's almost nothing to it. No bass. There's just zoot, zoot, zoot. But this tape could make it hardcore. Man, you're really invested in this. He looks at the bundle of tape in front of him. It shimmers under the shop's dazzling light show. Okay, I'll help you out. It's going to take a moment, though, so sit back and relax. He takes some time to look around in the store. The play of visuals all around the pawn shop is mesmerizing. Suddenly, Roy turns back to you with a, re a reel of tape in his hands and coughs. You know, these visuals would look super cool in the church. They would. Now it's at least 15 minutes. Don't be a weird don't be a weird dick. <clears throat> hey, those visuals you got here look pretty great in the church. Yeah, I bet they would. All those lights in a massive church hall. He stares at the intricate interplay of light and shadow all around him, suddenly moved by the idea. A sanctuary filled with hand-picked, positive photons. There would be no room for sadness in such a place. It's a brilliant vision, but... There's a but, isn't it? There's always a but. But? I rather like it here, too. So, yeah. I'm not giving you my projector. This tape is all I can do for you and your friend's nightclub project. He nods at the fixed tape on the counter at the top. There's no way to turn this around, I'm afraid. Well, thanks for the help. Yeah, my pleasure. I do what I can for true passion projects. Just try not to let this tape... Use this tape for negative photon emissions. Take responsibility, okay? Well, hope for the best. <laughs> I'm helping people. We are back. Hey, hoo hoo, ha ha. Good morning, comrade. Yeah, harder, cool. I found this reel of tape. Maybe we can use it to hard up Ake's jam. Yeah, remix time! His voice booms through the church as the as he takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. Tape goes here, into deck B. He clicks the switch, then tape starts spinning. Hand on his ear, he listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts. Wow! His, his face lights up with delight. Did you get this from Arno himself? A great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. What do you mean? Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? Ready. Oh. Oh. I actually like it now. It happened. Whoa! Hear that? He wipes his brow. The signs match perfectly! Now if only we had the beat for the full assault. It would be unbelievably hyper. What is this? Asel looks up from her contact mic. It's good. How'd you guys do that? You're right. It's uncanny how well it all goes together. Something else must be going on here. Almost like the scenario is designed by some kind of person who wrote the story and made all the pieces fit together meaningfully. Yes, but what if Van Eyck based his remix on some forgotten local melody, like a folk song, and you just found the original piece that inspired him to create this gem? That would explain why it fits so well. Nah, to me it sounds like classic Van Eyck. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough. I think it's just happenstance. Chaos in action. Contingencies of our limited ex existence. That and Egghead's fantastic talent. He nods to his friend behind the turntables. 
Noid's right. Egghead's technical talent is key. No. This is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Hmm. Did he have time to mix it together with his technical talent? It still is already the same timing and key and whatnot, right? To make it fit together? Asel's right, Vanek must live around here. It's definitely his creation. Be how it, be how it may, if it fits, it fits! He pumps his fist into the air. Bring up the volume! What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Andre looks back at you. Yeah, I remember. You said that it needs more bass. Hmm. What if we used that crazy sound assault from Suna's experiment, but contained it? Tamed it. Made a pulse. Oh! Oh! Egghead's puzzled face turns into a wicked grin. But how? What about that compressor Andre was setting up to achieve some sort of parallel processing? Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. But if it could be hyper... Hyper hardcore... Interfacing? I am pretty godly. The audio onslaught can be tamed. Connect the dots. <laughs> zip, zip, zip. That was the track in the background. Never ending. You can't grasp what's missing, but you can try to make something up anyway. What did I roll? I almost rolled Snake Eyes. I only ro I rolled a two and a one. Whereof one cannot speak, one ought to remain silent. Yeah, I don't want to fuck it up. If I tell, if I give him a bad one, he might try to use it. But I, but I want to succeed, and I have more interfacing. We can do this. <laughs> yes. The side chain, the beat. Side chain. What does that even mean? Listen, you can use the compressor to select between which track it's compressing. Either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the aux side, in the aux side chain input. It would allow maintaining a loud sound without peaks that fill up all the headspace. Okay, Egg, you need to start side chaining it. Side chaining it, you said. He turns down the music. His hands moving deftly across the mixer, setting up the necessary controls. Then he puts his headphones on, and his eyes go wide, wider than they've ever gone on drugs. <laughs> he starts jumping up and down with bliss and total silence, still listening to his headphones. Hey! Estelle looks up at her microphone. What did you do to Egghead, cop man? Did you break him? I'm... not sure. Are you ready, posse? Noid straightens his back, ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. Give him the thumbs up. Getting those uh, Outer Wilds vibes <laughs> from this process. Who would have ever expected that I would spend so much time in this location and it would kind of turn into like potentially the most interesting location in the entire game besides maybe the murder site, I guess? The audio assault is glorious. The speed freak dances on the stage, intensely waving his hands in the air. This is beauty! This is life! What in the world's going on? 
Estelle looks on, amazed at the display. The way melody and bass flow together, it's unnatural. We have tamed the sound, made it our own. God damn it. You hear Andre say to himself over the thumping beat, this dance club idea might just work out. Delorean Church, the place to be. Eggs losing himself in the sound. Pump it, pump it. This is it. This is a new era. The fabric of the world has been irrevocably altered. Damn, that's some, that's some hype right there that you're instilling. The fabric of the world has been irrevocably altered. What changed here? Just the fact that I finished a check, I wonder? I'm actually not sure. Yeah, of course I have something else done. Oh my god, this list of tasks. Look at us getting things done. You can't even scroll right now, isn't that nice? Confront the pigs to get your gun back. Arno Van Eyck, plus one interfacing when you're researching it? Interesting. The question won't leave you. Why did the melody line from a broken and discarded tape fit perfectly into a song played by some speed freaks in a frozen tent? Can it be a coincidence? Maybe it's the hand of the man-machine himself in his attempt to craft a perfect song. Maybe Egg Head is actually Arno Van Eyck in disguise. Egg? Egg? Hmm. Is that what we're gonna bring? Is that is that gonna be the reveal? Because that's gonna be a bit of an odd reveal, but okay. Do 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 do. Whoa, that's a lot of a lot of code you got there. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm charting up the time we've got here. We only have like 10 minutes left. So I don't... <sighs> we might do it later. I've got some mixed feelings because I only have about 10 minutes left in this episode, but I also have like... We've gotten to the less than six hours mark. I'm a little worried about missing the gun interaction, so I don't think I can s skip to the gun via Suzerainty right now. But maybe it's time for this. Interfacing impossible. Well, I got my tool out. That's as good as it's gonna get, right? I already, I already did that. Oh man, is it worth it though? What if I do like one more point? I should leave the. Yeah. I'm only gonna do one more point. I don't want to go too deep. I could max it out, but then I can't uh, unlock white checks for interfacing for the rest of the game. So I shouldn't like actively pursue the cap right now. That's a bad idea. Let's do one one point to interfacing. And I've got and I've got a lot of points lying around right now. So let's go. A couple points into encyclopedia. I, 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 yeah, I think I accidentally tr contributed two, three points at once. But, but even though the sound only happened twice. Alright. Trying to get some of those points spent. I want some of my skills to be stronger. Uh, and Encyclopedia and Conceptualization keep leveling me up the more they trigger, so it's, they have their own benefits too. It's the interfacing. Bonus from items 2. I think my gloves are the only things that increase my interfacing. This is all we get. Open the door! I rolled a 1 and a 5. You rattle the handle a bit, then push on the door with all your weight. It does not budge. Not only is it locked, it's also jammed shut. Huh. The door's shut tight. How can we get in there? The lieutenant shrugs. 
We don't get in there. What do you mean? We get into, like... Everywhere. Frankly, you're just going to have to accept the fact that you can't get in through every single door. But I'm... <gasps> the protagonist! No, no. We've gotten to every door thus far. That's what we do. We open doors. We're cops. That's our perk. When Everhart knew that... Even Everhart knew that's as part of our M.O. I'm not going to accept this. The door could be part of the investigation. Relax. No one's hiding in there. If we can't open it, others can't either. And thus, they can't get in. He looks at the door with a rueful smile. Thought gained one more door. At least you can think about opening it. About doors in general. They are, after all, fundamental to your life. Perhaps something useful will come of this. At least you can think about it. One more door. Half light plus one. What is behind it? God damn it, it cannot be. A disgrace. The door on the coast. You remember the one, right? The one that leads to the abandoned supply depot? Why, in the name of all that's holy, does it not open? Why? There has to be a way to get through that unopenable door. By gods, you're the police. All the doors are supposed to open before you. What will be- what will the others in the precinct think if you can't open a goddamn door? Th there must be a way. <laughs> that, that- that video game obsession. Cause like- but it, it's a door. You can interact with it. That means you can open it. There's a way. That's how these work. <laughs> Unless it's not. Unless it's not. Uh... Plus three shivers is pretty great. Learning cap of endurance raised to four. That's useful for checks and stuff, I suppose. Learning cap of all logic raised to four, which is useless, right? Yeah. What else did that do? Oh, physical passives all are slightly easier, which is actually good because I can't put points into physique. So making them all easier is actually really useful. Yeah. Shit. Being a leftist. And caps raised by one. See, that's important. The other one is bad. Because yeah, it just raises it to a number. But this one raises it by a number. So all of my inter stronger. So all, all six in the bottom are like kind of off limits. They're all pretty good. All fizz, all side caps raised by one is also pretty good. Precarious world's pretty good. Actual art degree is kind of mandatory. Wompity Dompty Dom Center is pretty mandatory. Yeah, I think magnesium based life form might be the most forgettable skill. All it does is give me a net a net gain of one skill, but they're blue and purple, right? That is the thing that gives me plus two volition. Which is a skill that I can't raise that high without that skill. Fuck. I'm getting kind of locked in place now. I have all these new thoughts I want to try to see if they're really cool, but... The screen, this thing's getting pretty maxed out. I have five more thoughts to try out. Like, what if I want Volition? That's why my health bar is so big. For my, my mental health bar, which is the one that gets drained the most often. That's why I don't die constantly. That whole, that whole problem I had at the beginning of the game just kind of went away because of this thought in particular. And minus one logic's not the end of the world because I can pump logic up manually. By a fair bit. Hmm. Maybe we wait for Wasteland of Reality just to figure out whether or not I want to replace it. Once we once we get it, I'll know if it sucks or not. I'll get I'll have it in an hour, I guess. There's some things going on here. Hmm. A lot of these other skills are pretty good. Guy's getting punched in the face. Punched in the face. Punched in the face. Sorry. I got a broken face. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That's a real song. <laughs> That's a real song. 
<laughs> Actually, really like that song, even though it sounds like I'm joking about it and making fun of it. I really like that song. Broken face by the pixies. If you hear if you hear some of those songs, you might have a grasp all of a sudden for why I'm not particularly into most of the music in a Death Stranding, despite everyone talking about how the music's so great in that game. I'm like, eh, it's fine. I'm kind of bored. It's not like it's not like distinctly unpleasant. It's just, eh, <laughs> which is not the response everyone else seems to have to that music. Let's see. I'm gonna do some reading. Unless I want to risk it. I... I don't want to do reading, because reading takes time. By which I don't... I, like, I'm fine with, with taking time right now in the episode. But I'm not fine with taking time in the world, because I have six hours until the thing happens. Though I believe the way that meetings work in this game at 22 o'clock, I think generally speaking, you can that's when meetings start because video games kind of have a narrow, have kind of a wide window for stuff. Yeah, so I, if I show up in the within, if I, I, I figure if I show up between 22 and 23 o'clock, it should be good. So I could play the game. So I guess I'll go back inside and play Suzerainty, but we're going to end this episode slightly early so I can start next episode by playing it. Because if I start it now, we will not. I don't, we can't, we don't, we will not have time. It might be a long, for all I know, it could be a whole episode if it takes six hours in game. We'll see. See you guys next time.